Welcome back. Now this, for many people who come to America from a different country, achieving the American dream is the end game. For our next guest, she accomplished the American dream and then some. She was first a refugee who came to the United States after being sponsored by a charity. She built a food empire that has earned her everything from a James Beard Award to an Emmy Award. Joining me right now is Lydia Bastianis. She is chef, TV host, restaurateur, and author of the new book, my American Dream, A Life of Love, Family, and Food. And Lydia, it is wonderful to have you back on the program. Oh, pleasure being here, Lydia. Well, I was so taken aback by your story because it's so emotional. And the fact that you achieved what you have achieved is just one in a million. Take us back to how you started back in Italy and when you first decided to come to America. Well, you know, Maria, I thought everybody just wanted to know my recipes and my food, and I was just happy with that. And then slowly, I was sort of this feeling, they want to know more about me. So my story goes back, I was born in Istria. Istria is no longer Italy, but it was Italy. And after World War II, it's this little peninsula on the northeast side, or maybe an hour east of Venice on the Adriatic. And uh, after World War II, the Paris Treaty, that whole area was given to the newly formed communist Yugoslavia. And ethnic Italians, there was a big exodus. There was 350,000 Italians that went back to Italy and then into the world. But I was just born and my parents, where they're going to go with the small baby. And we remained, the Iron Curtain went up and we got caught under communism. And communism was very restrictive, you know. Tell me about living in co under communist Well, rule. you know, I was young and so that was the way it was. But uh, we couldn't speak Italian. We couldn't go to church. You know, everything was kind of they even put uh, they took my father my father had a little business he had some trucks they took the trucks away they deemed him a capitalist they put him in in prison for a while and, and how dare he be a capitalist exactly yeah as well. they even told you what to wear and, and, and you had very well, specific things in terms of what you could buy well, there was very limited shopping, of course, but and you had to have your uniforms, you know, with your little hat. We had a little hat. We had a star on this little hat as a, as a pioneer, pioneer they called us, pioneer, and uh, and so it was very restrictive. But as a young child, I did notice, you know, this kind of hush hush. We couldn't speak. My parents would always whisper and things like that. And my 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 mother put me actually, uh, to sort of my mother was a teacher, an elementary school teacher, and she put my brother and I with my grandmother in out of the big city and they were really we were a little freer so what when you were in the refugee camp in Italy before you came to the United States how did how did you get there because you were sponsored by Catholic charities to come here right exactly uh, well uh, in 1956 my parents decided that they could no longer uh, raise their children under that uh, sort of oppression I was nine something and uh, my mother my brother and I went on the other side to Trieste now we had families on both sides you know because the the the, the line went down arbitrarily uh, and uh, who was here who was there but they wouldn't allow the whole family to go visit across the border because they knew we wouldn't come back you know sure. and they kept my father as a hostage so we went to visit my aunt supposedly she was sick that's why we got the visa and then two weeks later my father literally escaped the border he escaped the dogs were chasing him they were shot at he made it wow and he joined us in Trieste uh, to Zianina's house and that's where we are reunited and that's where I realized that we are not going back and uh, at that point my father had no papers uh, uh, our visas were expired we had to claim we had to register with somebody otherwise they would repatriate us wow. send us back and so we went to the police and the police uh, registered us in this political camp in the refugee camp and uh, we stayed there for two years before vetting ourselves and making the applications and hoping that we would come to America was our first choice. Oh my goodness I'm uh, getting the chills. <laughs> but just, so then when you came to America you came through the the structural way that legals come to America this we was legal immigration absolutely we had nobody here and through the Catholic charities Catholic Relief Services and the Red Cross they uh, filed all the papers for us we finally Dwight Eisenhower was the president then and he uh, opened the uh, the uh, immigration for political refugees uh, refugees fleeing communism and we were part of that and uh, how long did that process take I mean you went through years. all the right things and, and, and in two years you got your citizenship in America no no okay two years to get vetted 
to come to, to come America. America. So we had to go to a lot of interviews. We went to Geneva to the uh, American Embassy, the U.S. Embassy, and so on. Finally, we were approved, and we had nobody here. So the the relief services paid for our trip and whatever. We came here, and we were. Is sort of uh, welcomed by this, the Catholic Relief Services, the Italian community, the people that were willing to give. And they set us up. We actually were uh, in 36th Street, not too far from here, in a hotel for three weeks. And then they finally found a little home for us in New Jersey, a job for my father. My father was a mechanic, and our life as Americans oh, began. That is, so the, the, the time from when you first were vetted to actually getting citizenship in a legal way was how long? Well, we came here, I was, uh, that was 1958, uh, yeah. I was 12. And then, you know, we, 18, you had to be 18 to become a citizen. Right. It's actually, you got the green card after, after uh, two years, uh, and then after the green card, you had to keep it, I think, five years or something, and then you, you, you were uh, accepted for uh, And what, if, what an empire you created. From then, you said, okay, well, let me do know, what I do best, what I've known to do my whole life, cooking. Okay. Exactly. And uh, Maria, you know, the, uh, America, I, I, it was so welcoming, so such a, such, a, such a country, such a great country. And sometimes I, when I hear all these things, I said, but people, this is the greatest country. You know, look at me. Yes. I had all the opportunities. And, you know, we had to cherish that and we had to protect it. Lydia, great to have you on the show. Thanks so much. Thank you. What an incredible story. Lydia Bastiana.